Hello, Aries viewers. I'm going to get right into the reading. So it's pretty much just whatever the cards want to say. Whatever the, the current story is. I'm still doing private readings as well. So if anyone's interested in a private reading, my email is below. It's dragonenchantress at awol.com, right in the description box. Um, I appreciate your engagement too. If this is resonating with you, please, you know, like, comment, even just leaving a heart react comment really helps a lot because I'm trying to get back in the YouTube algorithm again to get YouTube to promote, to promote my videos to people. So I do appreciate that. And please subscribe too if it resonates with you. I'm going to be doing more of these readings regularly as well as some um, just random, you know, readings here and there. Every once in a while I get messages through dreams or just I feel intuitively guided to just put a message out there. So yeah, stay tuned if you like my readings. Okay, so we've got Queen of Swords, King of Cups, Two of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles. Okay, let's get some more energy on this. <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles. Page of Wands. The Emperor. I feel like you're finding a balance. I feel like this King of Cups. Let's see. And you it's it's male or female. You could be, you know, you might be a male in the Queen of Swords energy, or you could be a female in the King of Cups energy. Just take it as it resonates. Don't get caught up on gender. But basically, I'm getting here because you see how they, this isn't really a match. I mean, they. I think this this couple was a match before. Like I think before they were probably both the King and Queen of Cups. But it looks like with the Queen of Swords here, it looks like somebody had to kind of pull their energy back. They had to be strong. They had to be more grounded more you know two of pentacles is like juggling multiple things and finding a balance four of pentacles is basically not showing your cards basically you know kind of holding feelings back putting a wall up but i feel like i feel like the person that is doing this had to do that though i feel like this person that's you know finding that balance and being in this king or queen of swords energy had to find that balance they had to put a wall up because they're, you know, the the feelings weren't reciprocated or their feelings weren't being taken seriously. Like they just felt like when they were vulnerable, they got hurt. Because I'm just getting someone was in a Queen of Cups energy and now they're more in a Queen of Swords energy where they're more careful, they're more cautious, they're more afraid of getting hurt. I feel like you're also balancing with the Nine of Pentacles and the Page of Wands and the Emperor here. I feel like this emperor is like seeing you. This emperor or empress is like looking at you and it's like you're you're manifesting what you want. They see that you're successful. They see that you're not um, putting your life on hold for them anymore, basically. You know, they're watching you. You see that the emperor is looking at this energy. And Nine of Pentacles is about somebody, you know, so you're single, you're abundant, you're, you're probably focused on money, on career, on success in other areas of your life. And you might still miss, miss this person. You might be deeply in love with this person. It's not saying that you're not in love. Basically, just what it's saying is that you feel like you can't show that you're in love with this person or you feel like you can't express your emotions because I feel like in the past, you know, when you were the Queen of Cups, it's like, like I said, it wasn't reciprocated or it just... Because I'm getting the sense of like a fear, like this person's like you're very guarded now, like you're very afraid of expressing emotions. You're very afraid of, um, you're just kind of holding back, you know, but let's see what else. Three of swords, ten of wands, the four of cups. Or the Four of Wands. I don't know why I said the Four of Cups. <laughs> the Seven of Swords. The Six of Wands. Yeah, I feel like the situation for you is just heartbreaking. I feel like you went through a period where you were extremely depressed over the situation with the Three of Swords. Yeah, that's, that's major heartbreak, disappointment, betrayal. Ten of Wands is somebody, it's like, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. 
Like you might have just gotten to the point where the pain was just too much and you just broke. And right now it's like you're just trying to have that peace and stability. You know what I mean? Like you're afraid of like you're trying not to feel this pain again, basically. You're trying to just have that that peace and stability. Um, and it feels like with the seven of swords and the six of wands here. Feels like this person might try to get your attention through um because something of swords is like dishonesty, it's escapism, it's it could be lying, cheating. Six of Wands is about being in the public eye, it's about like public recognition. And so I feel like this person is kind of trying to they're going to try to get your attention, but they might not do it in a positive way. With the Seven of Swords, it just feels like they might um, play mind games or they might just do something kind of negative to try to get, you know, back in the spotlight. Justice. Page of Pentacles. Queen of Cups. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is... If this person wants you to be a king or queen of cups in their life again, if they want you out of this queen of swords energy, they're going to have to, if they want you to be a match again, if they want you to match that energy again, they're, they're going to recognize that those games don't work. Whatever this is, because it's like this person is seeing you, they're seeing you, you know, try to have, you know, like this peace in your life, this, you know, Focusing on money, focusing on career, focusing on success. And I feel like some of them take that as like, oh, you no longer love them. And it's it's not necessarily the case. You might still be completely in love with them, but you're just trying not to spend every single day being depressed over them, especially if they're not coming forward correctly, especially if they're not matching that energy. You know what I mean? Um, like if they're, if they're not reciprocating, if they're not matching your energy, if they're not coming forward in a, the way that they should, then, then yeah, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be in that queen of swords energy. You're going to be guarded. You're going to be blocked. You're going to be distrusting. You're going to be, you know, guarding your heart basically from this person. But, um, but yeah, I think that this person is probably going to try to come forward in a way where it's like, they might try to get your attention, through um I'm trying to think of what it could be here because I'm not feeling a strong energy of lying I mean I guess for some it could but it, it's almost like it's like this person just wants your attention so they're just kind of desperate to get your attention back and they're not really caring how they do that and so they might do it in a way that's very negative but I feel like justice is on your side here and this person's going to learn if they haven't learned already they're going to learn that the mind games don't work on you they're going to learn that you know this kind of energy just doesn't it, it's not going to work on you it's it's dishonesty escapism whatever because this might be somebody because I'm getting for some of you this person might try to make you jealous with somebody else like they might try to, and this could be just like flirting. Um, this could be, I mean, it, it could be on social media. It could just be out in public. It could be a number of things, but I feel like it's going to backfire badly on this person where you're just going to be like, yeah, no, I don't, I know I don't deserve that. No, -uh. like you're not going to, you're not going to, they're expecting you to panic basically and try to win them back. And I think that, you know, whatever they're doing, like, I think it might hurt you for sure. Like it might, you might see something and it might make you cry. It might be upsetting, but I think it's just going to be one of those things where you're like, okay, well this, this hurts like hell, but I know that I do not deserve this. I know that I deserve, you know, more than this. I deserve attention and mutual love. And, you know, I, I feel like this person might also be used to like toxic, toxic people who they might I'm sorry I'm trying to trying to when I channel I have to like pick up I have to pick up on the energy and find a way to word it properly word the the emotions and the energy that I'm channeling but basically I'm getting that he, this person might be used to it being a power struggle like in past relationships there might have always been drama it might have always been a power struggle it was all like pride and ego like it wasn't um 
Like I was watching the movie Spanglish the other day, and this 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 scenario is coming to mind. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but you like if you have, you know, T. Leonis Leonis character was like a complete nightmare. And the other woman, it's like she was very gentle. And there's one scene when her and Adam Sandler get into an argument and he calls her out on something and he's like, it's hypocritical. And she's like, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And like he didn't know what to do because he was so used to arguing with somebody who was toxic and who was just all about, you know, winning the fight. It was all about, you know, ego. It was all just a power struggle that when someone actually like had an argument with them for the sake of understanding and clarity and moving the connection forward, it was like he almost didn't know how to react. That's the kind of energy I'm picking up that like this person is so used to arguing arguments being about, you know, who's going to win the argument, who's right and who's wrong. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, where you're coming from is you don't you don't give a shit who's right or who's wrong. You don't care about ego or pride. You're you're if you're having an argument, you're doing it for the sake of clarity, of understanding each other, you know, on a deeper level, um, you know, and taking accountability, just honest, vulnerable communication. But I but I think that person, this person isn't used to that. They're used to the power struggles, to the to the fights, to the to the trying to one up each other. And I feel like they're also used to very insecure men or very insecure women. So that kind of shit would work on people like that. You know what I mean? Like if you try to make somebody who's really insecure jealous, like, yeah, they're going to like flip out and, and try to go through your phone and try to do this and that. But if you try to make someone who's confident, who knows who they are jealous, it's like you might make them jealous and it might hurt like hell, but they're going to have that sense of self-confidence. So they're going to be like, this this hurts, but I don't deserve this. Like I know I deserve you know, attention and mutual love. I, I deserve, you know, recipro reciprocity. Um, so this person is basically learning, like, those those games don't work on you. Even if they did in the past, they don't work on you now. It's it's not, you know, even if it, even if it, even if what they're doing is breaking your heart, you're, you're not going to show it. You're going to stay strong and you're going to you're going to, you're, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to give into that energy and it's just going to be further confirmation that, you know, you, that you don't deserve that, that you don't deserve to have to go through that. But, um, I feel like this person could also have some toxic, uh, ideas when it comes to relationships. Like they might have this idea like I said, they're kind of used to like the drama and the power struggles of people, but I feel like they might also have the idea that like people just want what they can't have. And it's just, it's just love is just a mind game and you just have to one up each other and yada, yada. And it, it's like, they're not used to someone who's genuinely confident like you are. Cause you don't do all that. Like you're, you're turned on by people who spoil you by people who, you know, blow your phone up and want to see you on a regular basis by people who send you the cute little good morning and good night text by, you know, you're turned on by, by people that, you know, are emotional and vulnerable and open with you and make time and effort for you. People that are able to step up and be assertive and like, let you know how they feel and like take control in the right ways. And, you know, mutual effort, mutual love, that's what turns you on. Um, but, but this person, I feel like this person is just like, they don't, it, it's like, they can't see that. Like they don't believe that they feel like everybody just wants what they can't have. But again, that's, that's based off dating, having a pattern of dating either men or women that have been really insecure. So they have, you know, in the past, like, yeah, people have been like that with them where they have just wanted what they can't have. Um, I think it also comes down to this person's, uh, insecurities as well where it's like if if the love is just mutual like if someone just genuinely wants them and wants their time and energy and attention they're like what's the catch like do you want like like are you trying to like rip me off or are you is this a game like like they don't like they, they have to like step out of that pattern and be like hey like everything's not a game everything it's not there's nothing there's no game here like it's it's not all just games you know um, so yeah, it's like this person is kind of realizing that you're different than what they're used to that, that, yeah, those games aren't going to work for you. 
And I feel like the divine is intervening here with justice and the queen of cups and the page of pentacles. I always see this card as like somebody manifesting some someone or something because I always see I'm always led to like see how this character is like looking at this, how he or she is like focused on manifesting something. And I think this is this person's spirit guide saying like coming to them and basically saying, hey, this shit's not going to work. Like you're going to lose this person if you do this. You're going to. You know, if you play these games, you're just, you're going to just turn this person off. You're going to just make, make this person think that you're not a real man or that you're not a real woman um, or what, it, you know, what it, like however you want to word it. So, so basically, yeah, your spirit guides are saying, hey, if you want this person to be in this energy again, this mutually receptive, you know, loving energy, you're going to have to you're going to have to step up and take control and manifest that and make an effort for them and, you know, show them that you care, show them, you know, they're, they're going to, basically you're going to see right through the games and you're just going to be like, no, I'm not doing that. The devil strength. Yeah. It's going to take this person a lot of strength to get out of stagnant energy. That's what they need right now. They need to get out of stagnant energy. The devil is all about, the devil is all about, um, like, cha like being, uh, like mental, you know, emotional, like spiritual chains, basically, like, like being chained up, being tied down by like addictions, patterns, you know, thought patterns, all of those things. And with the strength card, it's like, they're going to have to look at these patterns and they're going to have to, you know, stop trying to, it's like control issues where this person, you know, keeps looking at you and they're like, oh, this worked on, you know, this X and this X and this X. So I'm going to do the same thing. And, you know, if they want you back, they're basically going to have to open their mind and, you know, step out of their comfort zone and, and step into the unfamiliar and be strong and get themselves out of the stagnant energy, get themselves out of, off the merry-go-round, off this, you know, stagnant, you know, tunnel vision way of thinking if they want you back. And I think that your spirit guides are communicating that to them. I feel like they're recognizing this, like they're recognizing, like if they have done something toxic to get your attention recently and it didn't work, um, like they're recognizing that. I feel like you're also matching their energy. So if they come at you with like a really small energy, like a really like, like testing the water is just casual, like I'm just going to message you whenever I'm bored and lonely, but I'm not actually going to make any real effort. You're going to, you're going to match that energy. Basically you're, you're, you know what I mean? Like you're just, you're, you're going to have that wall up and you're going to go off of, you're going to match whatever energy they're giving you. Yeah. You're standing your ground and this is making this person want to build this with you through your pentacles. And the love is mutual. Like it's really, it's really sad because, you know, King and Queen of Cups, that's like, that, that's like divine counterparts. Like that is, that's a very loving, you know, two people that are very empathetic, two people that are very loving. Like, I don't think this person's a bad person necessarily. I think that they're, I feel like this person has a good soul basically, but I feel like it's like the trauma and the mental patterns that they're repeating that kind of clashes with who they are on a soul level, if that makes sense. Because, like, on a deeper level, I feel like they're, like, more of a king or queen of cups type, you know, like, em emotionally, like, who they really are is, you know, vulnerable and romantic and emotionally mature. But I don't feel like that's how they come across, you know what I mean? I feel like with all the trauma, it's like they end up playing games. They end up um, doing things out of fear of abandonment or fear of rejection. They end up... Um, you know, just, just it, lots of ego too, lots of pride, just like, you know, they have this pattern. It could be someone that's gone through gaslighting or something because I just feel like they have this like pattern of like, like as soon as there's like an argument or confrontation, they're like, it, it's like, like they're quick to fight or they're quick to, it's like a power struggle. Like they're not actually seeing the other person's feelings and where they're coming from. They're just seeing it as like a game or they're seeing it as like, like something they have to win. You know what I mean? Like they're not really like fully like understanding what the other person is trying to communicate. 
you know, this person like doesn't seem to know how to like listen to their intuition and their emotions very well, but I think they are learning those lessons finally. So that's a beautiful thing. Seven of Wands, Three of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles, the Hierophant, the Page of Cups, Eight of Swords. I feel like you do have anxiety about this because you do miss this person a lot. You do really love this person. You just have your doubts of as if they're ever going to come forward in the right ways. You know, you're just guarded. You're just dis distrusting. I feel like you are. Let's see. With the Eight of Swords, it's like somebody that's like... Eight of Swords traditionally is somebody that has all these swords around them. Like they have all these swords around them, but they have their castle and like true love and like everything right in front of them. But they're just so focused on the swords that they can't see that it's right in front of them. And this could be about this person, but I feel like it's also about you where it's like, you're so like, you're seeing the swords now. You're focused on the swords. Even if this person does love you, you're just so focused on like things they've said in the past or like ways that they've rejected you in the past where it's almost like you feel like like when you do think that maybe they do love you and miss you, you think that maybe you're just being delusional. Um, it's like you're just kind of like looking at all those swords, like you're looking at like like the rejection and the heartbreak and whatnot, you know, or whatever you've gone through with this person. For some, I feel like this person might have cheated on you. Five of Wands. Yeah, because it's two people. It's like you're both trying to manifest each other, you know, like you both miss each other. Because um, I feel like you're seeking, like we got like the four of wands and I was saying like, I think you're like seeking that peace and happiness and stability and like focusing on career and focusing on like other things like hobbies. And like, I think you're happy about those things. Like, I think you're genu genuinely like you know, enjoying like certain things in your life right now. But I think there's still like this, just this big hole in your heart because it's like you miss your person. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not over this by any means. I'm not feeling that energy at all. I'm feeling like, like you just meant like, it's just, you know, you, you don't want to just cry, like be depressed every, like all the time over this person either though. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're trying to kind of push yourself to focus on other things and to not let yourself get caught up in your head and fall into like, you know, depression or just, you know, thinking about the past or nostalgia and all that. It's like you're trying you're trying to find a balance between like, you know, because if you really love someone, it's like you're going to miss them. You're going to think about them on a regular basis, but you're trying not to let the pain and let those thoughts of this person like completely take over and consume you. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to... um find the find that balance in your life but it's really sad because it's like we have these two people that are not talking to each other but they're both trying to manifest each other with the magician the magician it's like these two people are right they, it's like they want to be around each other but they're both you know they're both like acting like they don't see each other and with the magician card here it's like you're both trying to manifest each other I think what this person is about to learn, though, because remember the, the cards we were getting before I was saying, um, what was I saying? <laughs> With the devil and the strength. Yeah, having strength to break these toxic patterns. Oh, I was talking about, so the games I was talking about. I think that's something this person is learning. They're learning to basically open their mind up there to get to they have to they have to you know finally do the, do the healing work because it's one of those things where it's going to be like they can choose if they want to be continue to be stagnant and continue to have like just 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 not good energy in their life or if they want abundance in their life just in general not just with love but with with anyone they want to be with or with money with whatever um, and I th so I think that's one of those things that this person is learning and that their spirit guides are working with them on right now is getting themselves out of that stagnant energy, you know, uh, going after what they want, being like opening their mind up too is a big one because like I said, they, they kind of just see, 
they see like you know I was saying like they just see arguments as like just power struggles like something you, you have to win like just just they're not you know what I mean like they don't actually hear what the other person is saying in these arguments they don't hear like the emotion that's being felt they just they're very quick to like get defensive and to get in their head and assume the worst or just it's kind of like a my way or the highway kind of person where they just kind of think that they know how everything is. Like they think they, they're just very limited to their own perspective. And so I think this person is finally opening up to multiple perspectives, to um, just other ways of thinking, of feeling, of being, you know, they're just opening their mind up because they're realizing you know, like they, they, they try to predict everything is basically what I'm saying. Like they try to, you know, like with all their exes, they try to play those same same games with you because that's what they're used to. They're used to they're used to that power struggle and it didn't work with you. And so I think the fact that it's not that that those games do not work with you, that that small, you know, that energy that they that bare minimum energy, it just doesn't work with you. The the you know, whatever it was that they were used to with insecure people, it's not working with you. And so that's opening their mind up. They're like, okay, everybody's different. Like I can't just judge all, you know, present and future friendships and relationships based off what I've been through with other people or based off, you know, such a limited perspective. Like they're having having to open their mind up and accept that, you know, maybe they don't know how everybody is. Maybe everybody's different. Some people do want what they can't have. Some people want what they can have. Some people you know, love clingy people, you know, some people love, and I feel like for this energy group, you're, you're the type that you, you like that clinginess, you like that emotion and that mutual affection. Like you like that, you know, like that's what you want out of a relationship. That's what turns you on. That's what makes you, you know, that mutual love, that mutual, um, attention and effort is, is what really turns you on. And so, yeah, their spirit guides are basically leading them to to open their mind up to multiple perspectives and ways of being, and they're they're seeing, they're seeing that truth now. And I think they're also seeing with the five of wands and the magician. I feel like they're also realizing that this isn't you guys are just not going to talk if they don't make an effort. Like you guys just the love is there. You both miss each other a lot. You both love each other a lot. Um, you you both want this, but it just feels like. Like it's going to, they're, they're recognizing that it's going to, they're going to have to be the one to step into that dominant masculine role. They're going to have to be the one to step up and take control and be assertive and come forward. Um, and if they don't, you're just going to stay in this queen or, queen or king of swords energy. You're just going to continue to be guarded. You're, con you're going to continue to, you know, to just kind of be doing your own thing and, and being an eight of swords energy almost where you don't really have a lot of faith left that this person is going to come back or that they actually love you. Um, so, so yeah, they're recognizing that if they want out of stagnation, if they want you to go from being a king or queen of swords to being a king or queen of cups again, to being in that emotional state, they're, they're, they're the one that's going to have to get this ball rolling. They're the one that's cause it's cause so far you guys are just missing each other and thinking about each other and you're both silent, but you're both trying to manifest each other. And so I think this is like a love message coming in where they're going to, they're going to start recognizing like, Hey, like we could go months or years without talking if I don't, you know, step up and take control and and manifest this and and make something happen. Cause I feel for this energy group, you're not gonna budge. You're not gonna you're not gonna say anything. It's it's this person's turn to to be the one to step up and to be the one to fix this and and get everything moving. So um yeah, but it does look like it does look like the, there's a possible love message coming in here, a page of cups. And I feel like you'll be receptive to it. Like I said, I feel like you're matching this person's energy. So if they're, if they're coming forward in this energy, if they're, you know, showing you that effort, you're going to reciprocate. You're basically whatever they're giving you is what you're going to give them back. Um, okay. Anyway, if you'd like a private reading, my email is dragonenchantress at aol.com. And I appreciate any comments, even just, you know, a heart comment below. It, it gets me back in the YouTube algorithm again, so people can see these videos. So um, thank you guys. And please subscribe too if it resonates.